there's so many paddlers all over the world that there's not many rivers that are left that have not been paddled. Basically, the only way to get into the rivers that we're going to be paddling is via flow plane. And these are not just any lakes that people have landed at. You look at them on a map and talk with pilots, and no one's ever been there before. So we have to work with some really talented pilots with some really extraordinary planes that are capable of bringing us into these rivers. My name's Jay Mahan. I'm 27 years old from Charlotte, North Carolina. Life happens quick. Uh, I didn't even know this world existed four years ago. To learn how to fly up here, I had to drop everything I had planned in life. I decided to come up here and stay year-round. I love kayaking. I love whitewater kayaking. I love exploring. That was my passion before flying. And there was just nothing I wanted more than to see these rivers that look just beautiful and untouched get run. Lomier Lake traffic, 5-1 Papas, depart to the south, right turn out, southwest bound. This summer our goal up here in Alaska is to paddle three different rivers that have never been paddled before. And it's a good question, you know, why we're drawn to first ascents. I think different people have different answers, but for myself, there's so much to it. I mean, you're looking at mountains from perspectives that mountains have never been looked at before. Plus, if things come together, you get to run some amazing rapids that no one's ever paddled down. This first rapid, uh, he's gonna draw everything out on some paper so that everybody understands fully what's down. But yeah, this is uh, this this is action. That wall, like within five, six, seven feet of the wall, and the further right you can be, the better. And then you kind of come back to the center of the river, um, and then you're in the middle of this gorge right here. rapid you can't run it you basically are looking up to the canyon walls beside you figuring out how in the world am I gonna get to the top of that thing we're out in the middle of nowhere just about as far from you know a big city or from a hospital as you can be and you're faced with so much unknown, you're charged with the responsibility of you know, analyzing and assessing that for yourself. You're not reading a guidebook and listening to how someone else did it 10 years ago or five years ago or last year. You're uh, going there and you're, and you're just figuring it out yourself. Todd and I, well, mostly Todd wanted to run this big rapid, <laughs> this gorge. Um, I just happened to be the unlucky one there with him. <laughs> so, so he ended up pushing me off the rock first <laughs> into the rapid. Went pretty well. He came down right away afterwards and uh, kept cruising down the canyon for a little ways so we could see the place that these guys portaging could get back to the river and hiked ourselves up. 
and after a little ways of walking ourselves back upstream through the alder and hollering and yelling, we didn't find any bears and we ran right into these guys and made our way back down here. Super Swamp Camp. Got some grits, can't be happier. Cheese and the grits. <laughs> We all have close friends that have passed away on the river, paddling, um, so we're definitely not, you know, we don't want to let that happen when we're out here. So we're making conservative decisions and we're running rapids only if we're really confident that we'll be able to safely descend them. Just like kayaking, there's always that dynamics of the water that you just can't perfectly read. And there's always that curveball that gets thrown at you in certain scenarios. You get that same sense where nothing else matters. You, you don't have a choice but to be completely concentrated on one task. Consequences of messing up and flying are similar to, to kayaking. I mean, your life's on the line. Sometimes you have another person's life on the line. Landing in this little spot is the easy part. Now he's got to take off in this tiny little pond. So he's over there, turn the engine off, pulling it all the way back, all the way to the other edge so he can have every inch of space to get out and get up high enough to make it out of here. go up thinking it's going to be a normal day flying but just out of nowhere the, the times you least expect it you'll just get those those moments that just leave your your tongue hanging out of your head moving downstream kind of feels like you're surfing up in the clouds or something it's just sometimes you're like this just doesn't seem like it should happen like this doesn't seem physically possible but there you are down off the ice field I was like hold I mean I dropped down and I was like I thought I was gonna start opening up down there and it just got tighter and tighter tighter I was like holy crap if I can't turn around I'm not I mean I don't have to do a serious climb because I was just nosediving down there and luckily iceberg was open that lake right there 
I it was know. just like sweet and I was like holy crap where's all this scud coming from and then you started coming up and you could just see the sun beam and you're like oh boy something crazy is about to happen <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh.